Okay, she flew. Very exciting. After a three year build, she got up in the air and she flew great. Um, so I'm very excited. Um, took me a few days after the DAR signed off and I had the airworthiness, the special airworthiness certificate in hand uh, because the weather just wasn't cooperating. So finally got a marginal better weather day and I took her up for a short flight. Um, she flew fine. Um, all I did was some lazy turns and stayed real close to the airfield and, uh, and then came in and landed. It turned out that um, not what the forecast said, it, uh, it got a little choppy and it started getting gusty. Um, so when I came in to do the landing, I ended up with a, actually at one point, my neighbor said it was a 16 knot crosswind. Uh, the windsock is right outside my door. So they were all standing right in front of the windsock and they said it was gusting to 16. So that wasn't really what I wanted um, for my first landing with my new plane but we got her down. It, it, uh, it took three approaches before I was happy. Uh, the first one, I was way too high. The second one, I was practically on the asphalt. Um, in fact, I think one wheel touched just, just enough to just touch. And, uh, but I was off center because it gusted and it drew me off. I only have a 30 foot run wide runway, so 30 feet is not very wide. Um, so I wasn't happy, so I did a go around. And then the third time I came in, it was a, it was a crabbed one wheel landing, um, but it was fine, um, smooth. Um, and I was, it was fine. It just wasn't as pretty as I would have liked and, and probably should have waited for a slightly better day. Um, encountered a couple of issues. Um, one, I kept getting hit or miss uh, warnings for a magnetometer miscompare and in, and Googling that, it seems like um, basically what everybody says is redo your magnetometer calibration. So um, in my neighborhood, um, I'm not, I'm in a little small neighborhood airport, you know, it's a flying community. So I have a 3000 by 30 foot wide runway and we just use the runway for taxiing back and forth. So we have a little bit of a turnaround area on each side but you're on the runway and I didn't want to do that. So I went to a neighbor's house who has a little more of a asphalt apron. Um, they said not to do in the Garmin instructions say, don't do this on concrete because there's rebar in concrete and that'll mess up the calibration. So I needed to be on asphalt and I needed to be away from any sort of manhole covers or drainage or anything that would be metal. So I found a spot and I did it, but it, it's at a bit of an angle. So I don't know if that caused any issues or not. Um, I went to a different spot and I actually had my wife help me. And so we went to the end of the cul-de-sac on my street, uh, again, where there's sort of a turnaround area for cars and planes, uh, because people on that side of the neighborhood actually use that road for taxing to the, to the runway. So there's a section, there's a manhole cover, of course, right in the middle. So I had to stay off center and, uh, I did my spins, like it says, with my wife calling off, turn right, turn, 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 hold. And then you stop and you let everything stop moving and then it does some calibration. And then it says, slowly turn right. And you just, you keep doing it till you do. I actually did a little more than a 360 and then it says complete. So we'll see if that solves that problem. The other issue I had was my COM1 wasn't working. So in the hangar, and on, right in front of my hangar, um, where my wife was, it worked. She could hear me on the radio. Um, but I, I, I think probably it wasn't ever getting to the antenna, but being 20 feet away, my COM1 was radiating enough for my handheld when you're 20 feet away. But when I got distance, when I took off and got away from the airfield a little bit, uh, no one could hear me. So um, I borrowed an SW. SWR meter from a neighbor. Um, this one does wattage and it, it'll check the SWR um, standing, weight, standing wave ratio, I think is what SWR stands for, which is sort of the reflected energy of your antenna to kind of test your installation and the, and the quality of the antenna. So anyway, um, all I was worried about was wattage. I just wanted to see so I did that and it failed. I had no wattage coming out of the coax right here. When I disconnected the antenna, put this on there, 
I had no wattage here. So I don't know, it could be something simple like the coax, I had a fitting come loose or it came unplugged from the back of the GTN 650, which I would love if it was something simple. Um, or I may have somehow pierced or cut, somehow grounded the coax um, between here and the front of the plane. So I'm gonna run that down this weekend. We'll see what it is. Um, obviously that wasn't a safety. I've got two radios and I had another handheld in my front seat. So I was good to go. It just um, was annoying when you're trying to, you know, I, the, my, you know, after I took off, my wife texted me and I happened to see it on my watch because I had my phone in my bag. Um, and I saw what she, she just said, radio not working. So I switched to COM1, tried again, or COM2, tried it again and, and she heard me. So uh, not a big deal, but a little bit of a distraction. So those were the two things. So I had the caution light flashing for the um, magnetometer miscompare and then COM1 failed. So, but other than that, the plane flew fine. Neither of those, those were just annoying distractions. They, they weren't any real issues. Um, but for this flight, because it was choppy and then I had a crosswind on landing, um, getting a good feel for the plane will have to come this weekend when I do some more flying. So currently the weather looks pretty good for the weekend. So we'll see if I can get several flights in, get some hours on, and I can start running through the, uh, the EAA um, flight test manual. This is a task-based, um, you don't have to do 40 hours anymore. You can do a task-based assessment. I'm gonna run through this book. I may still do 40 hours just to consider myself squared away because I need the practice anyway. Uh, and when you have your plane in your backyard, it makes, you know, I can go fly for an hour really easy after work or whenever. So, um, so I'm going to start working on that this weekend, get these couple of little issues figured out this weekend. Uh, hopefully I've already fixed the magnetometer. Um, I'm hoping I just needed to do a better calibration that somehow it was getting interference or because it was a slight angle when I was spinning around, maybe that caused something where the magnetometer didn't like it. Um, so other than that, great first flight. It was fun. Um, my whole neighborhood ended up coming out. That was not my plan. I, uh, I actually didn't want anybody here other than my wife sitting there with the radio. Um, and we had another neighbor who uh, she could call if uh, she had any issues. I have multiple A and P mechanics that live right around me. So uh, we felt like if there was any issue, she could call somebody and get some tech support immediately. But after they heard me take off, the whole neighborhood came out. So I had a huge audience. I have drone footage of my flight. I have uh, multiple cell phone camera views. My wife had our big camera out. So uh, I'll insert some of this footage. Uh, also, I had my 360 camera, although I, I had it set on single, single lens mode for some reason. So I only have the shot looking one direction. And then I had an action camera in the cockpit, but it's an older action camera and I don't have any cockpit audio. So that's fine, first flight. I didn't wanna be distracted with camera footage, but I did want it so I could share it with everybody. And, and it's just fun to have. And, and also if you have any issues, it's kind of nice to be able to go back and look and see what you're, you know, what all's going on with the plane. So um, kind of an aftermath, after the fact debrief. So, and I've done that, I've watched my landings and all many times. Um, <laughs> probably too many times, but uh, I, I, think, uh, I think I'm over controlling this plane is, is my biggest issue. Just uh, it's much lighter on the controls than what I've flown for all of my hours. Uh, and I'm not a high hour pilot, I'm very low hour pilot. So um, part of the learning curve. But anyway, first flight, big, big accomplishment, uh, big, big life check mark, built a plane, flew it got it on the ground without any issues. And now we're gonna move on to the, the fun stuff. So anyway, thanks for joining me and uh, the journey so far, more to come. Um, we got Oshkosh coming up. Um, I'm not gonna fly this into Oshkosh, but I am going to fly it to Green Bay, Wisconsin um, to be, cause I just, new plane, low hour pilot. I don't wanna, I don't wanna fly in the, the weekend before Oshkosh into the, into the show itself. So we're gonna fly to Green Bay, get a hotel and a rental car up there and then drive down to the show. So um, that, that, I think that's just a good safety decision on my part because I, I just don't wanna risk it. Um, but anyway, um, I, have a, I have an appointment for paint that I've actually put off uh, until the fall um, because 
I thought I would already have months of flying under my belt, but because I had so many delays, I want to enjoy the plane for a few months and get her all dialed in before I go off the paint. So um, I, I emailed Evoke Aviation, who is going to do the paint, and asked them if they could kick me to the fall um, calendar. So that way it'll give me the next few months, get me to Oshkosh, let me kind of dial everything in, and then we'll lose the plane for a while to paint. So she'll be silver for a little longer. But uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, until next time.